Welcome along to the Gobby Gaffer YouTube channel and uh, in the spirit of doing things a little differently and if you don't know what I'm talking about you probably need to go back and watch the last video it was all about Luton Town in the present day in the Premier League everybody's saying what are you rattling on about well actually we are doing things a little differently and in today's episode yes we're back with uh, Borussia Much and Gladbach but um, I know I did say at the end of the last uh, Gladbach uh, episode that we would come back towards the end of the season and see how we did. But we actually, uh, our form fell off a cliff. We uh, didn't win the Premier League. We came second. We didn't win the Premier League. Um, we couldn't win a game, really. It was We, we, we lost the uh, DFB Pokal in the final. We got through the final against Bayern Munich. We lost that. We weren't in great form. It wasn't a great watch. And I thought, you know what? Let's just play till the end of the season and uh, let's concentrate on the summer transfer window. Let's get some new players in. Let's, you know, reorganise and we'll come back in, uh, you know, in the next episode and it'll be all fresh and shiny. So let's put a little bit of meat on the bones and I'll show you the schedule uh, from the end of last season. And as you can see there, like I say, the, uh, the wheels really came off badly. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but... Um, the only wins that we we, we had a nice three uh, one against Leverkusen, and we did beat uh, Werder Bremen four uh, one. Other than that, things didn't go our way. Bayern Munich, as per usual, they always put the afterburners on. They might have a little bit of a dodgy spell in the season, but once the afterburners have gone on, that's it then, and they just end up winning the league. And as per usual, that's exactly what they did. They absolutely battered us. I mean, again, you know, I've said this before about football manager. What it tends to do is you always get somebody in the cup and then the same team in the league. Did exactly that. Last league game of the season, Bayern Munich. Who do we play in the cup game? It was the final, Bayern Munich. And uh, we got beat 2-1 in the league and 3-0 in the cup. So the season fizzled out, if I'm honest. And obviously due to our really poor form, uh, where, I mean, at one time we were top of the Bundesliga and, uh, we, you know, we were looking, you know, OK for maybe having a good challenge in the end. Bayern, we, Bayern Munich won it by 15 points and uh, we got we, we were in second place from Dortmund by just the four points. Like I say, that collapse didn't help us one little bit. But on the back of that league position, the board decided to give me 54 million for the transfer budget, 1.7 million wage budget, and uh, those figures considerably higher than uh, the previous uh, budget that was uh, that was given to me. A quick flirt through uh, the season review and uh, transfer of the season was uh, well, apparently was uh, Pavlovich uh, signed him for 24 million. And he ended up the season with a, an average rating of 7.11. Um, so if we just run down the list very quickly, uh, Victor Gaikarez didn't get an awful lot of game time because uh, Leonardo was a superstar for us. But uh, eight appearances, 10 goals, four assists, 7.15. Uh, Pavlovich, 42 appearances, five goals, two assists, 7.11. Mudric, uh, 37 appearances, 16 goals, 9 assists, 7.08. I would have signed Mudrich, but his value is about 74 million. Just couldn't afford it. Uh, Pobiga, 42 appearances, 5 goals, 4 assists, 7.07. .07. The uh, young goalkeeper, Wonderkid goalkeeper, Dennis Simon. We signed him for 15 million from Stuttgart. 52 appearances and uh, 7.05 and he actually was uh, later he was rated as the Bundesliga signing of the season. Uh, Schurz the centre-back, a little bit more about him later on, signed him for Torino 18.75 million, 37 appearances, uh, one goal one assist 7.03 and uh, Koku the midfielder that we had on loan from Manchester City 37 appearances, 9 goals, 6 assists, 7.02. Finances for the season, uh, everything was up. Most things very slightly. The main thing that was up was the competition prize money. That jumped from 90 million to 135 million, obviously because we were in the Champions League. And uh, merchandise sales, we sold uh, 294,000 shirts with uh, Marcus Leonardo, our superstar striker, top of the shop with... Pabiga, uh, Glock, Tete and Gaikarez are following closely behind. 
And the season finished with a, a, a bank balance of 76 million. We, have a, we had a transfer budget of 74 million. That's before all the shenanigans started. And obviously the wage budget, uh, one one point seven million, and a little shout out for uh, Marcus Leonardo. Like I say, our superstar striker, he made thirty one appearances uh, in the league, scored nineteen goals, four assists, four player of the matches, seven point one zero. But he did make a lot of appearances in cup games. Obviously, we got through to the cup final and uh, also the Champions League as well. And I think he scored some somewhere around twenty six, twenty eight goals for the season. Absolutely superb return from uh, Marcus Leonardo. And talking about uh, Marcus Leonardo, he's a uh, 6-1 to one to be a uh, top Bundesliga uh, scorer this season. So his stock is rising as we speak. I've also passed one of the uh, board requirements as well to uh, grow the club's reputation. And, uh, you know, I pass that with flying colours. And also our European ranking has risen 17 places and we rank 36th now in Europe. So another little spoiler for you. We are into the season. Played a few games. What I wanted to do was I wanted to get as near as I could to the end of the trans summer transfer window. Uh, so I played two or three games of the season. And uh, we're doing okay as we speak. But uh, I just wanted to try and get all the transfers in. So I could show you what, uh, what, what transfers have done. So uh, let's get stuck in shall we? So if we start with the transfers out and uh, the, uh, the, the, the headline ones are uh, Guy Carez, the, uh, the backup striker that I brought in. I kind of figured that having two dedicated strikers was probably, with the form of Leonardo, it probably was a little bit unfair on the second striker, which it was on Guy Carez. And uh, he eventually knocked on my door. He wanted to leave. He's gone to Atalanta for 20 million. So uh, we did okay on him. We made some money. And, uh, you know, I'm in good luck to the lad. But what I wanted to do was bring players in who could play other positions as well. So, you know, that those players then will be able to be moved around. More chance of getting game time. Uh, Felix Agu, the, uh, the, the young uh, wing back that I'd been talking about quite a lot. Uh, German lad, so selling germs, it's not, not the greatest idea because obviously we need them for the registration purposes. But again, he wasn't happy. So he's got the Shakhtar for 14.75 million. Uh, and Gumu, he was the right winger when I joined a Borussia Mönchengladbach. Uh, he's got the Celtic for just under 3 million. A um, couple of, uh, of loans have gone out there. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the headline one is uh, Per Schurz. Uh, spoke about him before. Uh, got a really good rating for the season. Brilliant centre-back. Unfortunately, he had a buyout clause in his contract. And uh, from under my nose, I just got the message that we've accepted £30 million for, for Schurz. And, uh, well, he's gone. Manchester City signed him. They came in for Pavlovich, but I knocked them back. And uh, I just said no. And then... Did the usual shenanigans. He knocked on my door. I'm not very happy. I want to go and play for Manchester City. Oh, well, that's all right. How much would you like it to be? I think I've got it up to about 58 million at the moment. And uh, that scared everybody off. So I'm as happy as Larry. So transfers in. What I've been able to do. And the first one through the door from Sporting for 29.5 million. And it's Pedro Agoncalves. Uh, so he's a left winger, but he can play through the middle. He can play striker. So as I've just been talking about, he's quite quick. He's got finishing of 17, but uh, everything else about him, he's very, very good. His mentals are excellent. He's got really good passing, great technique. So he can play in a variety of positions. And that's kind of what I've been focusing on. So Pedro Goncalves, I'm going to struggle with that name this season. And as you can see now, he's valued up to 82 million. And I always, rightly or wrongly, I always look at a player, uh, whatever you're buying him for, if he doubles in value when he joins you, that to me is an indication that he's a good player. You know, the players that come in for like, I don't know, say, 20 million and then they come in and they were 25 million well okay you've got a good player but the game's not seeing him as a you know like a, a really good addition and a future prospect if you see what i mean so before shares went i uh, needed a really good center back uh to rotate and uh, pavlovich shares and then 
we, we went to Udinese, 21 million, and uh, Nehuen Perez coming in there. He's an Argentinian lad. He's got 11 caps for Argentina. He's coming as a three and a half star player. He's now valued at 44 million. And uh, again, very, very, I mean, mentals. He's a, a little bit off the scale. Very good physical player. 15 for heading. Uh, marking and tackling, absolutely brilliant. So I thought, great, I've got myself now three really good centre-backs. I've also still got Bayer, so we've got some nice cover. And then this old shirt's from under my uh, nose. The director of football next brought this one to me. Uh, Julian Weigel, German player, again, very, very important for all the registration rules. 29 year old, so he's got loads of experience. If you look at his stats here, again, the mentals are absolutely brilliant. Physicals, absolutely brilliant. He's 17 for passing, 16 for technique. Um, he's going to play in the Esposito role. So him and Esposito will be uh, rotating for that position. But some, you know, great uh, strength in depth in that position now. And a German lad which is brilliant. 4.2 million next uh, to Ludogrets for Dominic Yankov. And um, this lad is coming, he's 25 years old, Bulgarian. He's come in now, he's valued at 33 million. So real, some real added value there. With Mudrich leaving, um, obviously we needed somebody on that left side there. Reese Nelson, his star rating, he's slowly dropping. And, you know, he will be a good backup player, but uh, we needed somebody who can start out there. And uh, he can play again, he can play all the way through the middle here, he can play striker, he's quite pacey. Um, 12 for finishing, so not, not, you know, not that amazing. He's got 12 for long shots, but uh, mentals again, very, very good. Physically, a very good player. He's only 5 foot 11, but I think he will do a very good job for us on that left-hand side. A 19.5 million next for a 25-year-old uh, Belgian lad. Now, um, I thought we needed some, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, Koku uh, went back to Manchester City. So I thought we needed some, uh, you know, extra cover in midfield. And uh, this lad, I think, fits the bill very, very nicely. He's now valued up to 40 million. He's got three and a half star rating. Um, passing, uh, technique, tackling, marking. He's kind of a really good all-round midfield player. So he can do box to box. He can and sit in there and be a supporting central midfield player. Again, mentals. If you see there's a theme here, I'm going for people who are mentally strong, composure, decisions, all of that kind of thing, concentration. And uh, he's quite quick physically. Another good player for that central midfield area. And of course, with the shares going, we needed another centre-back. So 21 million for uh, Malik Theo. Uh, he's a German lad again, and uh, he's now valued up to 42 million. Six foot four, uh, again, mentals, really, really good. Physicals are superb. And uh, 14 for heading, he's got good marking and tackling. So, you know, concentration, decisions, composure, all of that kind of thing. Very, very good. And uh, importantly, again, he's a German lad. So uh, fits in really nicely with all the registration rules. And uh, while we're on registration rules, another German lad, midfield this time. Uh, we paid 19 million for Tom Kraus. Uh, he's now valued up to 37 million. Uh, coming as a three, potential to be three and a half star. He's a bit of a ball winning midfield player, but he can play the box to box uh, again. He's physicals, very, very good. Mentals, very, very good. I mean, this team, this season now, this coming season should be very, very well set because we've got players who are mentally strong. They know what they're doing. And if you look, he's a perfectionist. So I think we're putting together a very, very good team. And uh, that is me virtually spent up. What I have done is I found a Brazilian striker, another Brazilian striker, 18 million. I don't think I'll get him because we've not got the money. But he's only 18, and what I've done is I've signed him with the view to loading him back to, you know, the, the selling club, basically, till the end of this season. So um, in that light, I'm wondering whether if the board come to me and say, sorry, you've no money left, I might be able to go to them and say, yeah, well, yes, but, you know, this is the, this is the forward-thinking ambition. Another great young kid who can play up front. Well, why am we Leonardo? So... 
will you let and sometimes it's recently it's been working for me that they've said okay then go on we'll let you have him so like i say i've got no money i'm just hoping the board will put their hand in the pocket because let's have a quick look at the finance and the finance is looking very very nice indeed so going into the season and like i say we have started the season already but going into the season we've got 48 million in the bank uh, very little transfer budget and we are a little over the wage budget but uh, like I say, I'm hoping that the board will just say, go on then, you know. And the season preview actually has us 25 to 1 uh, in second place. Bayern Munich are 2 to 9. So the media think that they're going to run away with the league again. I mean, if you look at the media Dream 11, it's basically all Bayern Munich players. But we do have one player in there and Goncalves has actually got himself into the media dream 11 so i think he will be a very very good signing and also uh dominic yankov as well he is another one who uh, is has got into key players and uh, just have a quick look at the schedule so uh obviously we played a bunch of friendlies in there marcus leonardo hitting the back of the net on a regular basis uh, we played by munich in the super cup and uh well it's the usual scoreline we got battered three nil Nothing seems to be able to bother Bayern Munich. I think we could sit, sign all the best players in the world and we still wouldn't beat Bayern Munich. But anyway, we'll see how the season goes. Hopefully they'll get off to a bad start. They haven't. But hopefully they'll get off to a bad start and uh, you know we'll uh, turn them over this season. We played the first round of the, the DFB Pokal and uh, Leonardo got uh, four goals in that one for a 5-0 scoreline. And then we've also played at Mainz 05, Leonardo on the score sheet on that one as well. So Leonardo has really set the, uh, setting the world on fire at the start of this season, banging the goals in for fun. However, his star rating has dropped his potential now. He was a wonder kid when he signed for us with five star potential. He's now dropped to a four star potential. So I'll definitely have to keep my eye on that one. But at the moment, he is banging the goals in for us. And I think uh, with all of that uh, done now, I think we're going to go and uh, watch a game. And uh, we're going to go, uh, go and watch the away game against Hoffenheim. And I'm trying a, a new tactic uh, for the start of this season. So um, let's uh, get stuck in. We've got new players and, and a, a new... It's not really a new tactic, but I'm just trying something a little bit different. So let's jump in the dugout and uh, let's watch the game against Hoffenheim and uh, see if we can... Uh, keep up our, our early season form and uh, maybe get to the top of uh, the, the Bundesliga. Well, that's if Bayern Munich let us pinch their spot. Let's, I'll see you in the dugout. So we are trying a control possession game uh, today and see if uh, we can control the possession. Uh, we've got a lot of pacey players in the team. Let's see if we can keep hold of the ball, keep it tight at the back but try and hit teams on the break. So the team is Simon in goal, back four of Rom, Pavlovic, Perez and Fresnida. Got Weigel as the DM today, Pabiga and Glock in midfield, Jankov and Collado out wide with Leonardo up front. And we are underway. I'd like to try and build on the, the start of the season that we've already had. So Leonardo could do with uh, getting a couple of goals in this game. I mean, I, I'm expecting three points. The media prediction is second for us. So Hoffenheim shouldn't really pose too much of a problem. I'm expecting that's the way it should be. But anyway, Hoffenheim are through and have scored within six minutes. 1-0 ahead. And uh, the control possession there, well, we didn't have it, did we? So... And we've not even left the dressing room yet. 11 minutes on the clock. It's all Hoffenheim. Ball there just skims the top of the crossbar. And uh, we're going to have to go attacking. So we have gone attacking and I've berated the players. Half an hour gone. I like to say we've not even left the dressing room really. This is a, a really, really awful showing. The match momentum has all been Hoffenheim. Just not in the game at all. Uh, right, okay, just as we're coming up to half time, Rom with a ball in the box and uh, Collado there with a header into the side netting. Dressing room, half time. You've been terrible, please sort it out. And we're into the second half, we're losing 1 0. 
It's kind of shades of the end of last season, this. Very, very poor performance. I thought bringing some new faces in would actually liven the team up. I mean, we started the season really well, but this is so poor. Lovely ball forward to Leonardo. He's gone a little bit wide with it, and we skim the top of the net with that one. So still losing 1-0. I'm going to go very attacking. We're going to give him another berate. Okay, 69 minutes, wholesale changes. Uh, Rhys Nelson has come on. Glock has moved further forward. Uh, Lakonga has come on at, uh, in the midfield. And I've changed both my wing backs, Nets and Bayer are now on the pitch. So uh, can that liven us up somewhat? We're very, very attacking now. But after all of that, the highlight that comes back is a Hoffenheim free kick. Can we please get our foot on the ball and somebody make something happen? Another Hoffenheim highlight. Can we pick that ball up? And I've no idea what that was. I mean, he had all the time in the world to run down the wing there. We're losing this 1-0 at the moment. And it's another Hoffenheim highlight. Pabiga, ball forward. Leonardo, nice little header. Ball forward again. We still don't pick the ball up. We're so disjointed. Bayer now, can his fresh legs do something? Sliding the ball in, and yes, finally, we do get the ball in the back of the net with Collado, but the referee is rummaging for his whistle, and it would not surprise me. No, 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 it's been given. So we're back to 1-1. We've got about 12 minutes of the game left now, but we are back with, uh, well, it will be a highlight for uh, Hoffenheim. It's their kickoff, isn't it? Can we pick that ball up? Can we tackle? Yes, we can. Reese Nelson. Reese Nelson coming. The, the fresh legs seem to have livened us up a little bit. But a really, really poor ball then. Gives the ball away. So disjointed. Simon pushes the ball onto the post there and keeps us in the game. I'm going to give them a demand more. I can't do much more. We're on very attacking as it is. Last substitution, 85 minutes. Don Calvez has come on as a shadow striker now, uh, just behind uh, Marcus Leonardo. Can we actually get a winner in this game or not? And it's looking at the moment like not. So we're going to give them, I can't give them another break. It's not, not reset. So Hoffenheim back again with another highlight. Can we hit them on the counter? Lovely ball over the top for Collado. Did he keep himself on side? Leonardo puts the ball in the back of the net. And if that is as if he stayed on side, that could be a winner. 2-1. Marcus Leonardo with a lovely goal there. And the fresh legs do seem to have livened us up no end. And it has been given. It's 2-1. We do need to drop back to a cautious mentality. Four minutes of added time. Can we do this? Yes, we can. What a great victory from 1-0 down, back to 2-1. Master stroke with the substitutions. Got the gaffer, genius. And we've won the game 2-1. And we're going to give the lads now uh, a nice pat on the back. Nice victory, very well done. And uh, we see the league table now. There's only two games been played. So Bayern Munich top, as per usual. We are second uh, with six points and Augsburg are in third place with four points. So I don't think we can draw too many conclusions from that game today. Uh, the new players didn't really cover themselves in glory and uh, I had to make uh, quite a few changes and bring the, the old guard on before we actually looked like we were attacking force and the fresh legs definitely worked there. Nice 2-1 win. Um, anyway, I think that's uh, going to be it for this episode. Uh, nice little transfer special. I know we've jumped into the league and uh, you, might, you might think you've missed quite a lot, but believe me, you didn't miss anything from the end of last season. And uh, we've jumped forward now. We're into a new season. We've got some new signings. We need to get them bedded in as quickly as possible because Bayern Munich will not sit around and wait for us. They are going to be like a runaway train can we get this Bundesliga title that we so dearly want? And can we do better in the Champions League this season? Well, you'll have to come back and see. So um, all that's left for me to say is uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.